intellectual property right have been identified as ideas inventions and creative expressions based on which there is a public willingness to bestow the status of property each industry should evolve its own ipr policies management style strategies and so on depending upon its area of speciality pharmaceutical industry currently has an evolving ipr strategy requiring a better focus and approach in the coming era under the impact lecture series sponsored by mic aict government of india this session is all about the intellectual property rights in india and implications for health innovation for which i shweta mishra assistant professor sait would like to welcome mr poojan kamani principal researcher ipt analytics gujarat i also uh, i would also like to welcome all the dignitaries present here dr sc chaturvedi director sait dr sudha vengul lekar dean rnd sait dr gorakant sarogi principal sait mr sunil kumar duvedi vice principal sait and all the colleagues i heartily welcome all the students present in the session it's my honor to portray the profile of our speaker sir may i uh poojan sir i hope i am audible to you oh yes ah uh, yeah you okay, can please okay, go ahead sir. thank you so much sir mr poojan kamaini is a this principal researcher at ipd analytics he has completed his b farm from st john's pharmacy college bangalore he has completed his post graduation from ms university baroda he has done post graduation diploma in ipr from national law school of indian university bangalore he is also a registered patent agent he has also worked with few reputed pharmaceutical companies like cipla alembic pharmaceuticals grace derma healthcare limited to name a few he has more than a decade of experience in pharmaceutical research patent law healthcare properties and pharmaceutics now i would like to invite mr poojan to take over the session sir please uh, thanks for the warm, warm welcome and uh, good afternoon to all dignitary present in this lecture as well as uh, hello my dear students uh, so uh, in fact this is a, a great opportunity uh, given to me by sip institute uh to uh discuss some aspect of indian uh, patent system as well as its implication on the uh, healthcare uh, system as uh, i'll start sharing my screen so uh, please uh, let me know once uh, you see my screen sure sir uh my i think my powerpoint presentation is visible to you guys correct yes sir it's good okay so uh today's topic is little bit uh, broader uh, because it's intellectual property rights in india and its implication on the health innovations so uh, i'll start uh, I'll, i'll 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 try to cover uh, as much as uh, possible uh, but uh, this is a uh, one hour is very limited time for uh, this topic i would say uh because intellectual property rights term itself it's very uh, big term uh in india it is divided into different six uh, uh parts like the different six type of the intellectual properties um it's patent trademarks copyrights geographical indication industrial designs and agriculture uh but only few have uh, out of the six only patent and trademarks have implications on the healthcare sectors but still uh i just want to uh, discuss in brief uh, with respect to all uh, this uh, topic so uh, you can uh, be aware of this brief about 
brief awareness of this individual topics uh patent is a great broad topic so i'll i'll try to cover it in later stages so i'll start uh, discussing about the trademarks i think uh trademarks are recognized recognized signs designs or expressions and that identify identifies the goods and services of a producer as being distinct from another uh de- definitely like you when you purchase something you guys may have uh, seen on the uh, brand name uh, brand name followed by uh, tm or r so that tm is trademark which is uh, the p- party or owner of that mark wants to or uh, intend to register or they have applied for the registration but still they have not uh, uh, granted that rights by the trademark office uh when you see the uh, uh suffix like r then it means that's a registered trademark and uh, either of the cases you can't uh, use the same brand name uh, to market your product uh, this uh, trademark is governed by uh, trademark act of 1999 and it's cover coverable like once you apply uh, it will Uh, give you the 10 years of the validity from the date of the application and every 10 years you have to uh, renew your uh, mark and that can uh, go to the indefinite like unlimited times you can uh, uh, renew your uh, trademark your trademark now a very important piece of amendment was brought in 2010 now it was Uh, to comply with the madrid protocol that madrid protocol is uh, the international uh, it governs the international trademark uh, 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 rules and regulation and that treaty madrid protocol treaty that protects trademarks in multiple countries through the filing of the one single application before that you have you had to file a uh, trademark in the different countries because intellectual property rights it's it's territorial rights correct so if you want to get uh, if you want to register your property in india then you have to file in indian patent office or indian trademark office or anywhere but when uh, but uh, uh sorry so uh, uh but this madrid protocols will enable you guys to file a one single application uh, throughout the single office you can file and you can enter into the uh, different jurisdiction uh next one is the copyright i think this terms uh, uh all of are aware because it's generally relates to material form literacy musical dramatic artistic and cine- cinematographical work audio tapes and computer software uh in each and every book uh when we open the book or on the front page or the last page they there is a notice that this book is this work is copyrighted and you can't uh, reproduce the copyrighted work uh without authorization of the uh, owner of uh, that uh, uh right so it is governed by indian copyright act 1957 after that there were so many amendments to the act and this copyright validity is 60 years like once you write any book right, or and if you copyright that uh, that that book then uh, that right goes to 60 years so and by this copywriting you can uh, get the uh, revenues uh, for your marketed product uh, like all the guys may have uh, listened to it that uh, kishor kumar has sung one song in 1990 and still his family may may be receiving the uh, revenues generated from the uh, that song in, in some part percentage so it goes to the 60 years uh next one is geographical indication uh this is uh, very interesting and uh, there is a lot of debate recently on this like geographical indication is highlights a plus of place of origin for the product for purpose of intellectual property and it will be closely linked to the perceived value of the good uh, for example darjeeling tea uh, we know that tea are manufactured in so many areas but why darjeeling tea because it has something uh, related to that uh, uh, territory so it's darjeeling tea next one popular is banarasi sari in india and banarasi sari of havana is also 
uh, very popular. It's, the study is not of uh, the GI tag is not only for the India. The next one is I think this MP guys must uh, know about this Chanderi sari because it's a GI of uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Mysore silk, Mysore Mysore sandal, Mysore oil, uh, sandal oil. So and most most popular Ratlami sev. Uh, you must have eat that sev and you must have released its test. Uh, but it has also got the geographical uh, indication. Next one is champagne. International, everyone knows about that. That is a place, and that breathing process is uh, very well connected, and it, it has become a brand now. Uh, and coverage in India is ten years from the date of application, and same like in trademark also, you can re uh, renew it unlimited times. So same, this geographical indication also you can renew uh, unlimited times. Uh, next one is uh, industrial design. Uh, so industrial design, that means it's uh, a unique look or feel of the invention, such as pattern, shape, or texture. That is also, uh, you can get uh, protection in India as per Indian law. Uh, there are different 14 class of goods. That is 14 class of uh, goods can be, uh, uh, you can get the industrial design for, for that goods and they have for just for ease of uh, access like they have divided it into the 14 different classes same you can get uh, 15 years of the life and every five years you have to renew the uh, your uh, uh, industrial design uh, in this uh, recently in 2000 there was a new law was passed and uh, that is design act and rule of 2000 and that uh, enables protection of specific protection of the semiconductors and this life is 10 years it's 15 years so that semiconductor integrated circuit layout can be also uh, uh, protected under industrial design but that life is 10 years not 15 years next one is agriculture so uh, there was a law in 2001 it was passed by uh, our parliament that's protection of plant varieties and farmers uh, farmers right act 2001 and this will establish an effective system for protection of the plant varieties, rights of farmers, plant breeders, and encourage the development of new varieties of plants. Uh, we must have uh, heard about uh, BT and uh, BT plants and also that, that's uh, a part of this thing. Uh, here, there are two different kinds of uh, protection will be given for trees and vines. The protection is 18 years and for other type of the crops protection is 15 years now the most important system is uh in intellectual property rights most important aspect is patent so what is patent i think we have heard about this term uh, so many times so patent is a ipr granted to the inventor of a novel non-obvious and useful invention and the right is confirmed if you if you are getting a, a grant of a patent if you file a patent and if your patent is granted then uh, it will give rights to exclude others from making using offering of sell or selling so if uh, uh, let's say if my this uh, uh, device is patented then I, i'm not selling it but i will I, I like I will also forbid others from selling as well as offering to sell is also an infringement. So in other words, uh, exclusive monopoly granted by the government to the inventor for commercial exploitation of the invention for a specific period of time. So that's the 20 years from the date of filing. Uh, this patent is a territorial right. It's assignable. Like if you have the patent, you can assign to somebody and you can license it or you can share your invention too. Uh, now, this patent, it's, uh, it's like uh, people term it, it's a negative right because you can, uh, like it, it's, it's patent is kind of sword. It's not kind of sealed. Like you can attack, but you, you have to, uh, uh, like you can forbid others. So that because of that language, uh, patent uh, term is a negative right. Uh, in Indian patent system, there were three core pieces of legislation passed 
uh, first was Indian Patent Act of 1970, Patent Rule of 2003, and Patent Amendment Act of 2005. Now, uh, we'll see brief about the how this in the in the how the history of the patent has uh, benefited the pharmaceutical industry in India. So, like in way back in 1970, our India was completely import dependent for the drugs, and because of that, at that time, most of the drugs were unaffordable. It was very costly. Then this policy and political development in early 1970s, like new patent act of 1972, and the most important, which is drug price control order, DPCO of 1970. Now this fourth legislation has, stayed the, uh, has um, laid the foundation of the strong pharmaceutical industry in India. Uh, so the patent act 1972 did not allow product patents in pharmaceuticals and DPCO put a large number of drug under the price control. So in 1970, like your, you can only patent your process, not the product. So because of that thing, reverse engineering was, uh, 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 reverse engineering was done. If your, if your product is made by process A, B, and C, and if you make same product by process of A, B, and D, then you'd be non infringed to that patent. And because of that uh, legislation, uh, this MNC growth was curbed, curbed, and it has given the conductive for the growth of domestic firms. And as a result of that, India became the major supply of the pharmaceutical drug across the world in short term. Uh, and see this, 1970 Act was known as the pre-TRIPS reason. TRIPS means trade-related intellectual property uh, rights. So that's uh, TRIPS. That means uh, like TRIPS is the uh, international body which you have like under the uh, WTO uh, World Trade Organization. They have designed a TRIPS regulation. In that, if you are a signatory of the WTO, then a minimum uh, uh, minimum sort of uh, protection you have to, or uh, that trip shows the minimum criteria for the intellectual property rights system in the India. So then, nationally, you can uh, uh, do a little bit changes in that, but ultimately, this trips guideline is the uh, base point. That below that you can't go. If you want to go above for the protection, then you can go. Now, this India becomes compliance of TRIPS regime in 2005. And then India had to allow the product patent. They abolished the process patent and they have to allow the product patent. Uh, now, now, the Indian pharmaceuticals focus were a little bit changed because of the difference, this, this strategy. And uh, because of that uh, strategical change in 2013, Indian pharmaceutical industry was the third largest in the world in terms of volumes. Uh, and generic manufacturers dominate the industrial, uh, uh, like Indian pharmaceutical industry, and remain pivotal in providing essential drugs at the affordable price. Uh, additionally, inventive activities is also picked up after new arrival of the uh, trips and because of uh, this, uh, uh, India became the signatory of the trip. Like company has started spending more on the uh, R and D. Uh, so this is the current scenario of the Indian pharmaceutical industry. Like uh, on this day, India is the largest provider of the generic drug globally, and we supply almost fifty percent global demand of the various vaccines. 40% of the generic demands in the US and 25% of all medicine in the UK, we are exporting to, the, to them. Now, globally, India ranks third in term of pharmaceutical production by volume and 14th by value. The domestic pharmaceutical industry includes a network of 3,000 drug companies and 10, more than uh, 10,000 manufacturing units presently. 
over 80% of the antiretroviral drugs which used for the treatment of AIDS are supplied by Indian pharmaceutical firms. Uh, guys, we know about uh, uh, what we did during the COVID time, the COVID and COVID. Now they are the uh, ray of hope to the world. Like our both of the vaccines has given the ray of hope in this uh, pandemic times. Um, now, what would be the future of like market size? Currently, uh, in 2021, market size of the market size of the pharmaceutical industry is 42 US billion dollar, uh, and we project that in 2024 it would be around 65 uh, US dollar in billions. And in 2030, we expect to triplicate what we have now, and we anticipate that uh, by 2030 our pharmaceutical industry would be 130 billion US dollar by the volume. Now, this is very important piece of information where how this R&D investment by the Indian pharma companies was uh, increased. Like in financial year 2012, it was just five, five, five percentage, just above five percentage. And now it is go beyond 8 percentage this financial year 2020 we can disregard because we know that uh, during the pandemic time uh, this activities was little bit affected by uh, the pandemic overall pharmaceutical sector was not affected but research yes it was little bit affected uh, because overall volume of the pharmaceutical was little bit dry so companies has uh, started to uh, uh, curbed on their R&D spending, but still, like in in a decade, uh, there was a more than three to four percent growth in the R&D spending, and we expect that it will go in the double digit in coming years. Uh, now, the most important thing is how government expenditure on the health in the US in in the India, so that is in uh, US billion. So we can see that in 2016. It was around 16.9 uh, billion dollar, okay, and it raised to 24 US uh, billion US dollar. So that's government is also spending, increasing their uh, spending on the healthcare sector. So that's a uh, silver lining in the dark cloud. Now, it is we discuss a little bit about the healthcare in India. Like that's very broad topic. But still, like historically, health policies in India were uh, centered on the idea of equity. Okay, but recently, it was it is little bit broadened uh, to incorporate the subject of universal health care uh, and or the provision of affordable health care extended to all citizens of the country. Recently, government has worked some uh, very good uh, uh, this is a policy making for the to improve the health care in the India. But still, I would I would tell that key because still this focus on equity, accessibility, and quality, India shoulders a high morbidity and mortality burden, and requires innovative solution to reduce them. Over the years, there were uh, so many, or we can say, multiple policy changing, which has uh, laid foundation to the future healthcare system in India. Do uh, this. Uh, vaccination like polio vaccination is an example at how we became the zero polio country then this covid vaccination speed of the vaccination is also a achievement where indian healthcare system has achieved with the limited uh, resources that they are going with the uh, super speed but still like see this are the there are multiple aspects involved in the designing of the healthcare in India. So we cannot uh, kind of link this IPR innovations to the healthcare because it, it has definitely it has contributed and it has contributed uh, in designing the pharmaceutical sector. But overall healthcare uh, contribution to uh, from IPR is a little bit a debatable topic. And um, after trips also, like in 2005 also, uh, till 2005, India was the uh, leading in the bulk manufacturing of the drug. And post-trips, we have become the uh, leader in the finished 
finished products. Okay. Uh, but still, like, this topic is debatable. There is no consciousness of on impact of the new IP policy on the innovation climate in the Indian pharmaceutical industry. Some say it's positive, some say it's negative. Uh, 2000, after 2005, uh, the product patent was introduced. So, so many multinational companies filed and uh, they got the product patents. So because of uh, that, like no other cannot market the generic product till expiry of the patent or uh, need, they need to take the license from the uh, patent holder. So because of that, some fear that overall healthcare, like overall health, cost of the healthcare would be increased, correct? Right? And we are uh, considered as a developing country, and uh, are, uh, we have so many other challenges. And because of these tips, we thought uh, it will impact adversely. Uh, some thinkers were telling that uh, just to become cautious, government has, uh, like, policymakers has uh, introduced certain other provision in, provisions in Indian Patent Act to stop the evergreening. So that was policy innovations to avoid the evergreening. Uh, like your previous uh, inventions are not patentable in India. So evergreening of the patent was prevented. Section three, this entire section three, which is uh, they, they tell that which invention is not patentable. Uh, I am including just a couple of uh, things over here, just because we are discussing the uh, implication on the healthcare. So I am not covering the uh, other aspect of the section three. So section three, section three D is specifically for the pharmaceutical industry because it states that the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance, which does not result in the enhancement of the non-efficacy of that substance or the mere discovery of any new property or new use of a known substance, or of the mere use of known process, machine, apparatus, unless such known process result in new product or employs at least one new reactant. So just to explain, like for the purpose of this clause, salt, esters, ethers, polymers, metabolites, pure form, particle size, isomers, mixture of isomers, complexes, combination, and other derivatives of known substance shall be considered to be same substance unless they differ significantly in the properties about efficacy. So just Glivic is an uh, example for this uh, section. Like Glivic is imatinib mesylate. So Novartis has applied uh, for product patent in 2005 at Indian Patent Office. But uh, consider this by citing this section 3D, Indian Patent Office has uh, denied the patent application to the clinic. Then it was, they litigated to the uh, higher courts. They even went to the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, but this uh, decision of the Indian uh, Patent Office was, uh, like it was never overturned by the higher court is, higher court. So, uh, that imatinib, it's a missile, and that patent was related to the polymorph. But uh, with respect to efficacy, there was no known changes in the efficacy with respect to its previous uh, polymorph. Like in other countries, Clevic got the patent and it was uh, got the evergreening till 2025, but in India, they did not. The same example. Same kind of example is this uh, Steriva, which is uh, Ipotropium. Uh, and in March 2015, using the Section 3D of the Indian Patent Office, they revoked uh, Boringer, Boringer's patent, which covers the drug Steriva, which was also related to the polymorph or salt. So they, they told that there is uh, like patent office cited that there is no efficacy advantage of this uh, patent. And next one is section 3i, which is method of treatment. Any process for medicinal, surgical, curative, prophylactic, or other treatment of human beings, or any process for a similar treatment of 
animals or plants to render from free of disease or to increase their economical value or of their products like method of use just to tell you in the abstract method of use patents are not patentable in india like if you invent a drug which which treat uh, lung cancer so that you can uh, patent product as such but method of using this drug x to treat the lung cancer that kind of claims will not be uh, granted in india whereas in other countries uh, they they grant such kind of the claims uh next important piece of uh, legislation is opposition you can file a pre grant as well as post grant opposition at indian patent office uh it is time bound opportunity to appeal the rejection of an opposition and available to anyone and like uh, once your patent application gets in the public if you feel that this invention is not patentable then you can inform patent office by citing that why this is not patentable you can cite your grounds and you can file this pre grant opposition uh, before the grant of the patent after your patent is grant still you can feel that xyz patent is wrongfully granted and it, it should not be granted because of certain grounds prescribed in the indian patent act you can find the uh, post opposition uh, pre uh, post grant opposition now the still there there are so many problems remain with the uh, indian patent office because it's still it is uh, under staff they 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 need to improve their infrastructure they need to improve the process of uh, yeah. like sometimes if you file the application then a decision to grant a patent would be take so much so many years so there if we accelerated on this front then definitely we can give a, a very good uh, intellectual property filing environment patent filing environment in the india and because of by doing this we can uh, accelerate the innovation particularly in healthcare industries as well as in pharmaceutical industries uh still like we are uh, you, there is a very strange uh uh requirement in the like if you want to qualify as a patent examiner then only uh, chemistry people uh, can be applied but if you done pha- m pharm in pharmaceutics or if you done b pharm then you can't Uh, apply as a patent ex- examiner. You need to appear for the if you if you like if you want to become a uh, examiner at Indian Patent Office, uh, then you have to appear the chemistry exam. And you would be amazed to know that in most of the applications in Indian Patent Office are filed by the uh, pharmaceutical industries. So come on, guys. There is a need of uh, pharmacy graduates as a patent examiner, and that's our right, and we should be there. So I hope in future we will get this opportunity also. Uh, next topic is compulsory licensing. Uh, that's Section eighty four in the Indian Patent uh, Act. So at any time after expiration of three years. from the date of grant of any patent any person interested may make an application to the controller of controller of the patent to grant a compulsory license on patent on any of the following grounds like you have to meet this ground in order to file the compulsory license and to get the uh, compulsory license granted that the reasonable requirement of public with respect to the patented invention has not been satisfied that the patented invention is not available to public at reasonably affordable price in india or the patent that invention is not worked in the territory of india so i will give an example to simplify the process like in 2012 natco pharma was granted a compulsory license to manufacture a generic variant of drug nexava with sorafenib 
and which is used to uh, treatment of the cancer. So this drug price was 5,500 US dollar per month. Whereas this net cost product was available at just mere 141 US dollar. So NATCO told the controller that this, this is too much. It's too much price and Indian uh, public can't afford this um, price. So we need to get the, like you should grant us the compulsory license and they got the compulsory license. Then buyer contested the, the controller decision. They litigated in Supreme Court. But ultimately, uh, Supreme Court has also uh, termed in favor of the NETCO and they given the compulsory license. So there are so many other examples of compulsory licenses are also there, but uh, we are not going there for now. I'm just quoting a one example. <clears throat> now, see, this are the uh, little bit about uh, intellectual property rights in India. Apart from that, you somewhere heard about the trade secret in your routine basis that what's the trade secret. See, trade secret is also a kind of intellectual property rights. But this other intellectual property rights are published, whereas trade secret can't be published, otherwise it, it won't be trade secret. So I will give you a couple of examples that what is the trade secret. Like, <clears throat> uh, let's see Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has a unique formula and that is that formula is locked somewhere in the strong room and nobody can access it. So, and if you want to recreate the test of the Coca-Cola, you can't because that formula is uh, uh, their company's trade secret. At the same time, there are so many breweries, alcohol breweries as well as so many breweries. Each and every uh, brewery has their own process and that are secreted that are secret sorry not secreted that are secret and it's known it's not known to the public otherwise anyone can uh, uh, exploit that formula and can make their uh, uh, product and ultimately whatever their brand uniqueness is there that would be that will be uh, vanished uh, but in india there is no specific law for the trade secrets so, uh, but that's undisclosed, right? I have not included anywhere in the presentation uh, because it's a little bit off track, but still it's intellectual property rights. That's why I'm uh, telling you guys. Uh, now, if we see that, I, as we discuss about the IPI system, its history, how it was uh, from 1972, how our pharmaceutical sector was grown, uh, then there was a major amendment in 2005, but still like people are, as I just mentioned you that they're still skeptic skeptical that what's its role on the healthcare sector. So still it's a debatable topic, uh, but I'm sure that in future, like uh, the startup are, startups are increasing. And now there is increasing our, our awareness of the patent filing and filing of the other intellectual property rights. So definitely in future, uh, um, there would be Indian industry would become more innovative. And uh, let's say like in future, let's say after five or 10 years, India will also have like Indian pharmaceutical company may have come up with a new blockbuster molecule, which completely uh, changed the healthcare avenue of, of entire world. So I'm giving you a couple of examples that how these innovations and how innovative thinking would be useful. So like there are so many students are present here as well as dignitary faculties also present here. So I want to cite some examples. So uh, you can go ahead and file your patents. You can uh, think laterally and maybe in the future, like uh, so many, some many some breakthrough uh, products may be uh, uh, breakthrough product may be uh, uh, come from the Orbindo Institute of Pharmacy maybe so one example is this pendamustin injection 
in us this example of the us i also cite certain example of the indian markets also indian scenario also so this pendamustin product was marketed as brand name trienda in 2007 okay uh, since 2007 it was available as lavaflex powder and uh, when you want to uh, give the injection you need to dilute with certain diluent and you have to give as intravenous infusion its innovator of this product was cephalon uh, it was later on take uh, taken over by teva uh, it has some patents okay now recently in 2015 16 a uh, company called eagle pharmaceuticals okay they came up with the new product which is bendeka and they came up with the same bendamustin uh, with bendamustin drug but the uh, changes previously it was available as lavaflex powder now it came with the ready to use solution so what was the advantage of ready to use solution like previously lavaflex powder uh, you need to uh, dilute it with the 500 ml of the diluent bendeka came up with the 30 ml ready to use solution so you can imagine that was a, uh, in cancer there patients uh, they had to go to hospital uh, they have to infuse your uh, in lavaflex powder uh, because of it's too much of the uh, liquid volume because 500 ml is too much and it was painful injection is painful also but bendeka came up with the simple ready to use solution by devising a uh, interesting formula uh, they filed their patent and how what they achieved what eagle pharmaceutical achieved they identified the open window by doing proper product study compared the lavaflex product then made the ready to use rtu because this rtu is always preferable option you know because lavaflex you need to dilute it then you have to inject it uh, you have to see that still there is no particles are remaining because ultimately it's iv so rtu is always better option eagle has identified this need they devised their own formulation secure their ip patent application filed granted the patent and then they sold their product to teva cephalon which was the owner of this three and that had huge market so they did it by the upfront payment of 30 million and they are eligible to receive 90 million us dollar in additional for the milestone payment apart from that double digit royalties of net sales of the product so learning aspect simple thing they the product was available in lavaflex they identified the opportunity they came up with the better option they filed the patent patent was granted then they sold their product to original owner and they got a uh, handsome money second is the inapar injection everyone may be know about this a uh, dynapar injection company stroika it is dosage form is aqueous injection current product sale is 250 crores inr until then the most popular low dose diclofenac injection was voveran 75 mg per 3 ml of novartis the injection was very painful because of its viscosity and had to administered in the buttocks because it's intramuscular administration and uh because of the volume you intramuscular you, you had you can inject at your arms also but uh diclofenac was specifically not diclofenac this voveran was specifically what to administer at your buttock and it was very painful in january 2008 troika launched its own diclofenac which is dynapar 75 mg per word ml per word ml injection here it was 3 ml they came up with the 1 ml injection a unique high concentrate low viscosity injection of diclofenac here its viscosity was high here its viscosity is low correct here is 75 m mg in 3 ml still is, its viscosity was high they came up with the unique formula which is 75 mg per 1 ml injection and this low viscosity injection of diclofenac sodium delivering the full therapeutic dose of diclofenac in just 1 ml injection volume interestingly it can be administered in arm muscles as well 
so which is less painful option and also managed to get granted patent in india as well as other countries so learning simple is change in the formula identify the opportunity in the market when they they file their patent and rest is the history one more example is this fulvestan injection fastlodex was this is us again uh, us centric example fastlodex innovator was astrazeneca dosage form was intramuscular injection and viscous solution problem was too deep intramuscular injection of the high viscosity product per dose of treatment administered or 1 to 2 minutes into each buttock and it was very painful procedure again eagle they came up with the interesting formula nano sizing the drug and they made it raised viscous and they made a suspension okay what was the solution they improved the dosage regime by two higher viscosity 5 ml doses versus one low viscosity 5 ml dose here there were two here it's just one injection improved dosage administration time 1 to 2 ml 1 to 2 minute per injection versus far less time in seconds composition does not contain castor oil this fastodex has contained the castor oil castor oil so it was little bit painful uh, they nano sized the api and they also improved the needle size guys like we we know that everyone is scared of the needles big needles when you go to the doctors uh, for the injection you see you you will be scared by the size of the injection so here uh, they came up with the 25% thinner current needle used to administer the paclodex so what was the learning like same innovations proper thinking identifying up, up that opportunity applying that opportunity can definitely uh, get the uh, good results now i just highlighted the three examples there are n number of examples of dead cases so how you can like subject matter to create your ip and patent portfolio a chemistry guys like person who are working in the medicinal chemistry can work on the compound or new molecules they can work on the polymorphic forms the guys who are working in the pharmaceuticals they can work on the formulation and technology drug release platform technologies processes particle size viscosity density and other characteristic of the product analytical method you guys come on you can find a new analytical method you can file a patent and uh, definitely you will get the good return out a good return out of impurity method of treatment see this is not patentable in india but in western countries it is patentable so if you come up with a new use of a old drug then also it would be a turn around uh, uh, let's say by let's take an example of sildenafil Uh, so it was used initially it was discovered just for the erectile dysfunction but then they came up with the new use of the drug and then they they found out that that drug is also useful for the treatment of the uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension so that was the new use of old drug uh, device you can come up with new devices because let's say an insulin kind of like diabetes uh, there are insulin injections plus there are some other uh, devices uh, which is useful in your uh, respiratory delivery systems so you can innovate there you can found out you can innovate a new device that can be breakthrough and last is your pharmaco pharmacokinetic data so this is like ip fencing uh, attack when no one is prepared appear where you are not expected okay so by following this strategy you can also successfully uh uh devise your own patent and that may be having some commercial value these are the basic requirement to file a uh, patent application it's pretty simple process you can take help of uh, any patent agent or any law firm if you think that you have very unique 
uh, formula, organic product, or anything which I listed over here, you can go and you can file your own intellectual property rights. It's a pretty simple process. So, where to get such kind of ideas or thoughts? See, in day in, day out, uh, specifically persons who is working in like studying master of pharmacy, uh, they exclusively spend one year in their research. So they they have to uh, select research title by doing literature or IP searches, try for collaboration with the pharma industry, small scale or large scale, try to get challenging project for them and solve it. Create your own ideas, file IP patent applications first, plus offer industry for licensing or sell out. So, Take away should be your make academia industry relations stronger. So uh, by doing such this kind of the rational work in future, you may not have to uh, go to industry for the job. Industry may come to you or you can have your own startup. See this last, uh, this 10 minutes was a little bit off to the topic, which was, uh, which was, just a little bit off, but I just wanted to encourage you guys uh, to go innovate, go with your startup, and and you can reach to the skies. Oh, thank you guys. If you have any questions, you can go ahead. I know that it was a little bit monotonous uh, because. Uh, Zoom application, so it became uh, Zoom meetings. It's okay, it becomes a little bit monotonous. You may have listened to me for an hour, so thank you for uh, bearing me. Thank you, guys. You can ask any questions if you have. Thank you so much, sir. It was nice to have an insight on IPR. It was uh, such an amazing and informative session. I'm sure that from your learnings and uh, knowledge sharing, uh, our students would be benefited and they would be oriented towards the IPR. So uh, now with the support of IIC, uh, may I put up some questions which I had received from the registrants? So sir, may I? Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, the, sir, for the first question which I have received is, what is the role of PREPS and BIPO in patenting? Is there any major difference between the two? Uh, see, both are, WIPO is World Intellectual Property Office. So uh, that's, that's a piece, they, they, you can file a single application at WIPO, then you can go to the respective countries. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, this IPR is your territorial right. Uh, if I want to file a patent application in different countries, so uh, previously uh, this uh, that WIPO was uh, established, previously you had to file your application in each and every countries, like India, US, uh, UK, you have to go to the different country to file your application. But now uh, you can file a single application at WIPO, then you can go nationally. Ultimately, for the granting procedure, you need to go to the national procedures because ultimately each and every a uh, country has their own patent rules. Um, so you need to uh, uh, go uh, go for the granting procedure in each and different countries. But for the WIPO, you can file your patent application at the uh, single office instead of filing your patent application at the uh, different uh, offices. So it will give you the convenience. TRIPS is just a regulation. It's not a, a, any authority. It's just a regulation that a minimum uh, of that, like minimum regulation you had to uh, comply with each and every uh, uh, WTO countries that World Trade Organization participant country has to, uh, uh, minimum they have to uh, follow that rules. So that's, that's tips. It's not, uh, so there's a huge difference between them. One is authority, one is just rules. Thank you so much, sir, for answering it in our depth. So uh, moving ahead to the next question, um, what is the general time elapsed? Like um, just now the patent piece has been revised. So what is the general duration elapsed for the process of patenting, copyright, and trademark? Uh, See, I, I will answer you 
specific to the patent. Uh, uh, presently, there are uh, fast track applications decently, like before a couple of years back, Indian patent offices also came up with the uh, expedited procedure of the patent granting, uh, patent filing. Uh, and uh, granting of that. If you file that, then within, uh, let's say, optimistic time would be within uh, an year or an year half. You can definitely, if your invention is uh, patentable, then you will get the patent. Whereas in traditional procedure, uh, first you are filing a provisional application, then in 12 years you file a complete application, and from filing to 18, uh, months your application would be published then you can file request for examination within 48 months so how fast you file that request for examination you will get the uh, your patent granted so in in historical uh, like in, in traditional way also i think within three three maximum three to four years your patent will be granted as i provided that your patent your invention is patentable Trademarks takes a little bit time, but we are not much worried about the trademarks because ultimately uh, uh, patent and both are the different where here your product can be exploitable. Trademark, it's okay, like it, it takes time. And copyright, it's, it's simple, like you you, uh, you, you think that this, uh, your invention is copyrightable, you go and file, after some time uh, it would be, rights will be granted to you. But in all three cases, if you want to uh, market your product, you can start uh, marketing your product from the day one. And uh, once your product will be granted, if any one uh, other parties is exploiting your rights, you can sue them and you can get uh, uh, penalties from them. Thank you so much, sir, for answering all the questions and explaining us beautifully in the best possible way. Now, I would like to request and invite Dr. Gaurakan Sarogi, Principal SAIP, to propose vote of thanks. To our speaker, sir, please. Uh, thank you, Sweta, again. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. As a representative of Sri Arbindo Institute of Pharmacy, I would like to thank Mr. <coughs> Poojan Kamani, sir, Principal Researcher at IPO Analyst for providing in-depth knowledge about patenting as well as about intellectual property rights and how it can be useful in healthcare innovation. Thank you, sir, for providing valuable time for all of us from your busy schedule. Thank you, all of you, all the participants and all the delegates for being the part of this webinar. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Poojan, sir, for keeping our words and accepting our request to be a part of this impact lecture series. And I believe that attendees would be enlightened from your session. So once again, thank you so much, sir. Um, for all the attendees, there is an announcement that in the chat box, you will find a feedback link. Please fill this link. This is mandatory to get a certificate. So please fill this link properly. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you everybody. so much, sir. Thank you so much.